Chapter 1. Welcome to Aspero Station. Amani fought the urge to press the nose to the viewscreen on the side of the small cabin the embassy had booked. As the newest assistant to the ambassador, they had to stay professional. Still, the massive space station that the ship was approaching was beautiful in design. A feat of engineering that showed what all the spacefaring species could accomplish. A sparrow station, as it was known to the humans, had many arms, joined by a protective outer barrier and the center core where the meeting space was. It reminded Amani of a dandelion puff encased in glass. The barrier rippled as the ship passed through. They took a slow, calming breath before collecting their personal bag, stuffed full of documents and notes on the different races that co-inhabited their new home. Briefcase secured, they exited the cabin, walking down the narrow hallway to where the cabin attendant waved them into the busy entranceway. As they stepped out, they were met with a swirling vision of colors, sights, and scents, the mixture of the various races all surrounding them. Closest to the ship they had just disembarked was a Mysatune vessel, all sleek metallic lines, the tube-like gangway that extended from it dropping into a deep river-like channel in the ground filled with crystal clear water. As Amani's eyes traced the aquatic pathway, they caught a glimpse of three of the Mysatune, the cedian-like body with bioluminescent tendrils drifting from just behind their wing-like pectoral fins the flashing patterns of light and color indicating a conversation in progress. They pulled their eyes away after a moment, looking up just in time to prevent themselves from bumping into an Atraxi. The tall, plant-based Xeno swiveled its head around to look at them, the eye spots on the otherwise completely smooth face seeming to meet their own. Vaguely humanoid in shape, the being had two horn-like buds that extended upward from their head. Lightweight clothing draped over the skinny frame made of tightly wound vines extending from a central trunk. Amani stammered out a greeting. Stars of rays find you well. A nod of the head and a faintly pleasant scent filled the air. The auto-translator implanted into Amani's jawbone chirped softly. From her traxy. Pleasantly well. May they fall upon you. The scent changed, earthy now. You seem distracted. New here. The head raised once more. Amani blushed, embarrassed to be caught out so quickly. <laughs> Yeah, this is actually my first day, they admitted. The scent shifted again, becoming more like light rain. Ah, let me guide you to the admissions, then. It stretched out several of the twisting vines toward them. Amani hesitated, then nodded. Yes, that would be nice. The Atraxi nodded and began to guide them through the busy port. Amani found it hard to keep their eyes on their guide. While non-humans weren't rare on Earth, this was the first time that they'd personally been in the minority. After fifteen minutes of walking, the pair found themselves in front of a series of interconnecting booths. A faint citrusy smell came from her companion. Here you are. If you need to find me again, the word name for myself is... A small tablet they were holding beat. Solke. Amani smiled at them. Solke, I'll look you up once I'm settled in. The Atraxi nodded, then turned and wandered back into the throng of beings that swarmed around the busy port leaving the human to the Zans that waited patiently behind the counter. This particular Zans plumage was a brilliant white, with stark, geometric gold feather paint around the ear tufts. Their large front limbs rested comfortably on the counter as it nodded as Amani reached them. Welcome to a sparrow. Just visiting, or here to stay? Here to stay, Amani replied, putting their ID into the slot. It nodded companionably at them, eyes scanning the screen in front. Ah, here to augment the human ambassador team. The eyes pinned for a moment, ear tufts twitching. They nodded again. Everything checks out. Your luggage has been wrote to your new abode in the human branch. It would appear packages you've sent ahead have already been delivered. Once again, the Zans nodded. You have been registered as a new citizen of the station, and may your move in be smooth, Mix Amani. Amani nodded, picking up their bag once more, then stepping past the gate. Outside was a mass of public transport, from private shuttles to the massive pneumatic capsules. Okay, just for today, we'll splurge for the private shuttle. I don't want to have to worry about luggage. They stepped up to the terminal, confirming the transit call on their species, then watched as a forest green shuttle pulled up in front of it. The door swung open, revealing a spacious interior with plush-looking seats. Amani stepped in, stowing the luggage once more. The door slid shut behind them, and there was a faint hum as the shuttle lifted off and Amani watched in wonder as they passed by the different arms, which ranged from a fully submerged oceanic area to what looked like a series of shattered metal cliffs. After nearly an hour, the shuttle chimed, then halted in front of the human arm. 
A forest of pines spread out behind the airlock, a paved path leading into what looked like a small cluster of buildings, just visible. Amani smiled, then stepped forward, eager to see their new home. The pathway led to a small collection of wooden stone-fronted buildings, scattered evenly around the curve of a lake. Amani double-checked the note. Fifth one along the path. As they walked past the first four, they could see small nameplates where the paths diverged. Lynn, Ramos, Sadi, Sims. Amani halted in front of the nameplate in front of the fifth house, which read Samara. They walked up to the door, which swung open for them, as a warm voice chimed from hidden speakers. Welcome home, Mex Amani. Amani kicked off their shoes as the voice continued. I have been updated to match the settings of your previous home assistant, but please feel free to change what you need. Currently, you have one meeting scheduled for late morning, marked Introduction Brunch. Amani nodded absently and reached up, tugging free the pins from their hair as the braids fell free from where they'd been bound up. Good, that'll give me a bit of time to relax and explore. They left the suitcase by the door and went to go poke around. Just off to their right, they found a small but serviceable kitchen, with a cozy-looking breakfast nook. A quick search of the cabinets revealed a state-of-the-art food printer, but also a surprising amount of fresh produce. Amani retrieved an orange, feeling a smile form. A little taste of home, even this far away, was a welcome addition. They tossed the peel into the composter, finished their snack, and then walked into the next room, finding a small study with a sturdy desk and comfortable-looking chair next to a large display screen. Amani tapped on the desk, and the display screen lit up, the background showing drone footage of the human arm of a sparrow and the message, Welcome to a Sparrow Station. They watched for a while, enjoying the eye-in-the-sky experience as they zipped along above a river. As the drone zipped up an artificial hill, they tore themselves away from the view. Their continued exploration turned up the small toilet room tucked under the stairs at the end of the hallway. They gave it a cursory glance before heading up the stairs, small lights clicking on. The lights illuminated the narrow hallway at the top. Opening the first door they came to, they found a bathroom with a deep tub and separate shower, running into a grey water drain for the facilities below. Frosted windows lined the top of the walls, letting in light. Closing that door, Amani checked the next, which revealed a small storage room, lined with shelves, a nearly two-meter decon unit at the back. I wonder what they expect me to need to clean that's that size, they murmured. They turned to inspect the final room. This was the one they had put most of their house credits into modifying, and they smiled with delight upon entering. The walls barely registered as such, a full surround screen making it appear that the boat-shaped bed was floating in a pond filled with lily pads. They pressed a button on the wall, and the scene shifted, the projections fluttering and flowing into a fantasy-style grotto, which revealed a desk and closet built into the wall, previously hidden by the hollow overlay. Amani walked over to the bed and flopped onto it. Home. As they lay on the bed, watching the sky shift overhead, they felt the excitement that had carried them through the last day of their flight start to drain slowly, replaced by happy exhaustion. Close my eyes for just a minute. Then, we'll go unpack. Thank you for listening. This has been the scuff recording of my Twitter story. It does not yet have a name, but if you've got a suggestion for it, feel free to post it in the comments as this is the part where I will be polishing the story into something a bit more productive. Please feel free if you've got questions, comments, suggestions, leave them in the comments below. If you're curious about what's happening, the story has progressed quite a bit since chapter one, but it is very hot where I am right now, which makes it difficult to record. Going into a very small, uh, uncooled closet is unsurprisingly very very, very painful right now. But I do hope you enjoyed it. If you've enjoyed the artwork, that's the background, so this isn't just a black screen. That is by Count Ravenwolf. You can find him over at Twitter, Twitch, or Instagram, and his links will be in the description below. I hope you have a wonderful day, and thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye!